Hey everyone, how's it going? I recently did a video on the best Chicago suburbs, so it's only fair if I do a list of the worst ones. These are the towns that everyone should avoid for their own well-being. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping in and welcome. This is Stuck in the Kernfield, where we explore Illinois. Without further delay, here are the 10 worst Chicago suburbs. Number 10, Dalton. Illinois has a thing for pronouncing towns differently than they're spelled. So this town should be Dalton because there's an O there, but apparently it's pronounced Dalton. This town of 23,000 seems like a miserable place to live. The median household income is around $15,000 less than the Illinois average at only $44,511. Both men and women have median earnings of $26,000 and 26% of the population live below the poverty line. The unemployment rate is three times higher than the state average at 15.8%. The median home sales price is half the national average at $92,000, but for the 35% of the people in this town who rent, the monthly housing price is $1,118, so that's above both state and national averages. The schools are also subpar. Their test scores are 72% lower than the national average, and only 83.2% of the people graduate from high school. This area is also high in crime. The FBI estimates that there were 603 violent crimes committed in the previous year, which means the violent crime rate is 59% above the national average. The chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 29. There is currently a missing persons case for this town. 15-year-old Elise Shiloh has been missing since March 12, 2020. If anyone has information on her whereabouts, please contact the Dalton Police Department at the number shown. Number 9. Zion. The cost of living in Zion is 11% below the national average. That's about all the good news there is about this town of 24,000. The schools are terrible, their test scores are 85% below the national average, and their teacher to student ratio is 20 to 1. Only 75.3% of the people have graduated from high school, so it isn't much of a surprise that 18.4% of the residents live below the poverty line. The unemployment rate is almost twice the national average at 8.9%. The median household income is below average at $46,735. Zion saw 148 violent crimes last year, including four homicides, and 721 property crimes, so the chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 28. This place is safer than only 11% of the U.S. cities. There really isn't much to recommend this place. Number 8. Sauk Village. The cost of living in this town of 10,500 people is 12% below the national average. That's it for the good news. The schools are in need of fixing, their test scores are 92% below the national average, and only 83.7% of the people have gone past the 8th grade. The student to teacher ratio is 19 to 1, so that needs some improvement. The housing market isn't so great. The average home price is 60% below the state average at $69,100, but the median rental runs $1,068, which is higher than average. The job market sucks. The median household income is only $42,532, which is 39% below the national average. The unemployment rate is 14.7%, and the poverty level is at 23.5%. Sock Village also gets marked down for crime. There were 42 violent crimes, including three homicides, and 271 property crimes reported. The chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 34. The people who live in this town are probably miserable. Number 7, Ford Heights. The crime numbers weren't released by the FBI for the previous year, so estimates were used to determine the safety in this town of 2700. The chance of being the victim of a crime is estimated to be 1 in 70, so Fort Heights is safer than 52% of U.S. cities. The cost of living is 10% below the national average, and that's one of the few nice things that can be said about it. The median household income is only $23,220, which is less than half of the national average. Women, on average, earn about $2,000 more than men, but both genders are well below average. The unemployment rate is 23.3%, which is 401% higher than the national average. The poverty rate is 196% above the national average, with 44.8% of the people in this town living in poverty. The schools are just awful. The average test scores are 93% below the national average, and only 72.8% of the people there have completed the 8th grade. 
The housing market is cheap in this area with the median home price at $58,800 and the average rental price at $819. Only 28.7% of the residents in Fort Heights own their home because the income just doesn't allow for upward mobility. Number six, Linwood. With a population of only 9,000, the FBI estimates the violent crime rate in this town as being 12% above the national average. The chance of being a victim is 1 in 41, and Linwood is safer than only 27% of U.S. cities. The median household income is 9% below the national average at $50,171, but the poverty rate is better. It's 12.7% in Linwood compared to 15.1% nationally. Home values are better than in some places on this list. The median sales price is $148,400 and rent runs $933 compared to the Illinois average of $925. The area surrounding Linwood was going to be turned into an Indian reservation. The Ho-Chunk Indian Nation of Wisconsin had plans to build a reservation and casino there, but then the recession hit, so they're currently just holding the land. And that's too bad. It sounds like Linwood could use an economic boost from people passing through. Number five, Burnham. This is a village of only 4,200 people, so there isn't much to do there. The cost of living is 5% below the national average, which it has to be since the area is economically depressed. 23.4% of the people live below the poverty line, and 14% are unemployed. Male earnings are under the national average at $24,261, but women make more than the men at $30,625. Burnham gets marked down in the schools category because they only have the one elementary school and the test scores from that school are 75% below the national average and the high school graduation rate is 82.5%. The median home price is $97,100 so it's not quite half that of the national average. The FBI estimates that the chance of being the victim of a crime in Burnham is 1 in 47 so it is safer than 34% of U.S. cities. This is another town with an active missing persons case. 19-year-old Elias Perez has been missing since November 29, 2016. If you know his whereabouts, call the number listed. Number four, Harvard. Unlike some of the other places on this list, Harvard is actually relatively safe. They only had eight violent crimes and 64 property crimes reported in the last year. This is a town of around 9,000 people, so the crime rate puts them at being safer than 82% of U.S. cities. The other good thing about this town is that the cost of living is 10% below the national average. But everything else about Harvard is bad news. They have a high poverty rate, it's 20.9%, which is well above the Illinois average of 14%. This is due to the low wages. The median household income is almost $14,000 below the Illinois average at only $46,742. Men earn an average of $25,000 while women earn $23,667. Part of this is probably due to the fact that only 71.3% of the people in this town have graduated from high school. Their test scores are 75% below the national average. I'm not sure why, because the student to teacher ratio is on par with the state average at 18 to 1. If anyone knows why 30% of the students drop out, leave a comment below. Number 3, Riverdale. As with a lot of towns on this list, the cost of living is the only good thing about Riverdale. This is a town of around 13,000 people, but 30.1% of them live in poverty. The median household income is only $31,438. Oddly enough, women actually earn more than the men in this town. Women earn a median income of $31,105 compared to the men's income of $26,413. The town suffers from an unemployment rate of 13.6%, so it's a good thing that rent is below average here at $830. Crime is through the roof in Riverdale, though. There were 99 violent crimes reported, five of those were homicides, so the violent crime rate is 95% above the national average. There were also 377 property crimes. This town is only safer than 9% of U.S. cities because the chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 28. This place should be avoided if possible. Number 2, Harvey. This town is just tons of fun. High crime, poverty, bad schools, this town has it all. The median household income is only $21,909. That's not even half of the Illinois or national averages. 
Men averaged $23,675, while women averaged $19,175, which explains why the poverty rate is 37.9%. Harvey has approximately 25,000 residents, so that's over 9,000 people living in poverty. Due to the economic issues, the majority of people in this town rent their homes for an average of $817. The 45% of people who have bought a home had a median sales price of $72,700. Crime is terrible in this town too. It is estimated that the chance of becoming a victim is 1 in 26, so Harvey is safer than only 9% of US cities. Violent crimes are 80% higher than the national average. There are currently two missing person cases in this town. 16-year-old Danielle Israel Evans has been missing since November 2nd, 2019, and 21-year-old Willie Dennis has been missing since April 27th, 2015. If you have any information regarding these two, call the Harvey Police Department. Number 1. Robbins This is a village of around 5,000 people, and it needs a lot of improvements. The schools are horrible. Their test scores are 82% below the national average, and only 77.5% of the people in Robbins have graduated from high school. The housing market isn't great. The median sales price is $72,500, which is less than half the Illinois average. Renters pay an average of $844. The overall cost of living is 9% below the national average. The median household income is only $30,490, which is 49% below the national average, and one-third of the people in Robbins live in poverty. Women earn slightly more than the national average at $28,266, but men earn significantly below average at only $22,447. The unemployment rate is 7%, so that doesn't help things. This small town has a big crime issue as well. There were two homicides reported in the previous year, in addition to 36 other violent crimes and 57 property crimes. The chance of being a victim is 1 in 58, and the crime rate has been increasing. There's just nothing good about this town. If you think I missed a town that should have been on the list, leave a comment below, or if you live in one of these towns, say hi. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell icon to get more content about the land of Lincoln. Thanks for watching. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. And until next time, I remain stuck in the current field.